Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch. In this short take, we'll talk about converting ratios to percentage change. Not that exciting a topic, but in fact, it's a pretty useful thing to understand. The reason is because we love ratio measures in medicine. We have relative risks, relative rates, hazard ratios, standardized mortality ratios, odds ratios. All of these are ratios something about the event frequency in the group of interest over the event frequency in the comparison group. Event frequency may sound a little odd, and the most familiar measure of an event frequency is a probability. So it may be the probability of heart attack in the group of interest over the probability of heart attack in the comparison group. That's one ratio. Or the probability of cancer in one group versus another. Another ratio or the ratio of the probability of hip fracture in one group versus another, or the ratio of the probability of death in one group versus another. The general form is the probability of an event in one group versus another, or some of the times you use the term the probability of an outcome. Now, that is a ratio of two numbers, x over y. And let's consider what that ratio means. Let's say that ratio is 1. What does a ratio of 1 mean? Well, it means the probability is the same in both groups. The numerator and the denominator must be the same. The probabilities must be the same. How about a ratio of greater than 1? What does a ratio of greater than 1 mean? Well, it, if it means the probability is higher in the group of interest than the comparison group, it means the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And how about a ratio of less than 1? What does a ratio of less than 1 mean? Well, it means the probability is lower in the group of interest than in the comparison group. It, numerator must be smaller than the denominator. Now, probabilities can involve a lot of numbers. Things like, let's see, the five-year risk of heart attack is two per thousand. That's a lot of numbers. So let's work with a simpler quantity. Oh, yeah, money. That's always easy. Let's consider my retirement account balance now versus my retirement account balance in 2000. Let's make some real numbers here. We've got an x over a y and that produces a ratio. Now, a ratio of 1 means my balance has stayed the same. A ratio of greater than 1 means my current balance is higher than my 2000 balance. And a ratio of less than 1 means my current balance is lower than my 2000 balance. Didn't have to get that small, did it? All right. Let's say I have 8000 in my retirement account balance now. It was $10,000. That produces a ratio of 0.8. What percent of my money have I lost? Well, I lost 2000 from 10000, so that's 2000 over 10000 equals 0.2 or 20%. But that information is contained in the ratio of 0.8. A ratio of 0.8 always means that the numerator is 20% smaller than the denominator. What's the algebra? 1 minus 0.8 equals 0.2, which equals 20%. Let's say my account balance now is $6,500. It was $10,000. That produces a ratio of 0.65. What percent of my money have I lost? Well, I've lost $3,500. That's $10,000 minus $6,500. I lost it from $10,000. So $3,500 over $10,000 is 0.35 or 35%. But that information is contained in the ratio of 0 0.65. 0 0.65 always means the numerator is 35% smaller than the denominator. What's the algebra? 1 minus 0.65 equals 0.35, or 35%. What's the general lesson? 
For ratios less than 1, the percentage decrease, numerator relative to the denominator, is 1 minus the ratio. Well, these examples have been pretty painful for me. I don't like to lose money. Okay, if I make some? Let's say my retirement count balance now is $11,000, while it was $10,000. That produces a ratio of 1.1. What's my percentage gain? Well, I gained $1,000 from $10,000, or 1,000 over 10,000 is 0.1, or 10%. But that information is contained in the ratio of 1.1. A ratio of 1.1 always means that the numerator is 10% larger than the denominator. What's the algebra? It's 1.1 minus 1 equals 0.1, or 10%. Let's say my account balance now is $12,500, and I started with $10,000. That produces a ratio of 1.25. What's my percentage gain? Well, I gained $2,500 from $10,000, so 2500 over 10000 is 0.25, or 25%. But that information is contained in the ratio of 1.25, which always means that the numerator is 25% larger than the denominator. What's the algebra? 1.25 minus 1 equals 0.25, or 25%. What's the general lesson? For ratios greater than 1, the percentage increase, numerator relative to the denominator, is the ratio minus 1. Note the subtle difference. Here I have a table. And if the ratio is less than 1, that means the direction is a decrease, numerator relative to the denominator. And the percentage change is 1 minus the ratio. If the ratio is greater than 1, that implies the direction is an increased numerator relative to the denominator. And the percentage change is the ratio minus 1. Well, is it OK if I really make some money? Let's try that. Let's say my retirement balance now is $30,000. It used to be $10,000. That's a ratio of 3. What's my percentage gain? Well, you could say 3 minus 1 equals 2, and 2 is 200% increase. But people have trouble once you talk about increases greater than 100%. What is a 200% increase? It has a way of confusing people. Wouldn't it be more understandable if I simply said I tripled my money? I think so. How about if my account balance now is $80,000 and I started with $10,000? That's a ratio of 8. What's my percentage gain? Well, you could say a 700% increase. But wouldn't it be more understandable if I simply said my account increased eightfold? Where does that leave us? Well, I think there's a little bit more subtlety. Let's change that to ratios greater than 1 to less than 2. Use the ratio minus 1. But once that ratio gets greater than 2, you've got a big increase. Forget the percentage change. Go times as high. How does this all play out in medicine? Here, I'll give you three findings. An RR of 0.9 for heart attacks following aspirin versus placebo. Well, the interpretation there is that patients taking aspirin have a 10% decreased risk of heart attack. 1 minus 0.9 equals 0.1 or 10% decrease. Or an RR of 1.3 for breast cancer in women with early versus late menarche. That means women with early menarche have a 30% increased risk of breast cancer relative to those with late menarche. That's 1.3 minus 1, or 0.3. And how about an RR of 20 for lung cancer in smokers versus non-smokers? 
Well, we could say a 1,900% increase, but we wouldn't. We'd say smokers have 20 times the risk of lung cancer as non-smokers. These are all ratio measures. And we should know that expressions of relative change like these tend to exaggerate both the perception of risk and the perception of benefit. So I'm not necessarily advocating their use, but you will see them a lot. And they can be very misleading. What you really want is to get the absolute numbers. Here's what you should know. Medicine is full of ratio measures. Big ratios, 2, 3, 10, are easy, although we don't see them that often. The numerator must be double, triple, or 10 times the denominator. Ratios near 1 take a little bit more work. 1.25 means the numerator is 25% higher. That's the ratio minus 1 while a ratio of 0.75 means the numerator is 25% lower. That's 1 minus the ratio. Well, that's it. You're now done. I hope this helps. Thanks.